Coming up on Mayo Clinic Q&A. Integrative oncology is a practice where we are using lifestyle medicine, dietary modification, stress reduction, exercise, acupuncture, acupressure, yoga, mindfulness. So we combine all of these modalities to help our cancer patients, not only with quality of life, but also to hopefully improve outcomes as well. Rather than just focusing on the disease, integrative medicine includes wellness, vitality, and healing. And these practices of improving your body and mind are not just for patients. Integrative medicine, it's not only just for cancer patients, it's really the fundamentals are for everyone. Working on improving our lifestyle, getting up and moving our bodies, exercising daily, getting good quality sleep and stress reduction. I mean, these are things that not only help with cancer patients, but really with everyone. Welcome everyone to Mayo Clinic q and I'm your host, Dr. Helena Gazelka. Integrative medicine is an approach to healthcare that includes practices that are not traditionally part of conventional medicine. This can include things like herbs, acupuncture, massage, yoga, meditation, among others. Integrative oncology incorporates these therapies into conventional cancer care. Joining us to discuss this today is Dr. Stacy DeAndre, clinical and integrative oncologist here at Mayo Clinic. Welcome to the program, Stacy. Thank you. Thanks for having Thanks me. Thanks for being here today. I think this is a really fascinating topic and not something that I know much about. I know of our integrative medicine and our oncology practices being separate but not combined. Tell me, what do you, how do you describe integrative oncology to your patients? So integrative oncology is a practice where we are using lifestyle medicine. So things such as dietary modification, stress reduction, exercise. Um, also, we do use some supplements and other mind-body practices, acupuncture, uh, acupressure, yoga, mindfulness. So we combine all of these modalities to help our cancer patients, not only with the quality of life, but also to hopefully improve outcomes as well. I love what you said about lifestyle. I had never thought of it that way before, but that's whole person care. Right? Definitely. Lifestyle issues are really the foundation of what we work on because diet and exercise and stress and sleep, all of these things are just the foundations to improving health in general. Stacy, I'm curious how you personally became interested in integrative oncology. So I practiced medical oncology for many years. I actually trained here at Mayo a long, long time ago and went to practice in California back home. And oh, probably maybe six or seven years ago, I started having some of my own health issues and I went to see an integrative provider just to help me kind of get through some of those issues. And I a whole new world opened up to me. I wasn't aware of that all of these modalities really existed. I was really focused at, at that time on just traditional um, oncology care. And I started taking some courses and learning things and thinking, oh, this could help my cancer patients. And every course I took, I learned more and more. And I decided to incorporate that into my oncology practice and really started to shift more towards integrative medicine as opposed to actual treatment of cancer, although I still do that as well. So it was it was through personal experience and just finding a, um, a gap, I think, in, in cancer patients' care. What a wonderful story, Stacy! Experience is the best teacher, they say. That's terrific. Thank you for sharing that. How does integrative oncology help your patients? So we help our patients in throughout their journey. And so there are different phases that cancer patients will go through. So the first phase is when patients are starting their therapy. So whether that's chemo, radiation, immunotherapy. So we help them with their side effects. Uh, many patients are taking supplements and we want to ensure that they're safe. There are many interactions between herbal supplements or dietary supplements and uh, our treatments. So we want to ensure that's safe. We help people with cannabis counseling. So we're, um, we uh, do a lot of that to help with symptom management. And if patients are 
uh, have indications, we can certify them for that through the state. So that's kind of the first part. And then when patients do move into survivorship, then we're really focusing in on lifestyle issues, weight loss, diet modification, all of these things, exercise can really help improve outcomes. And then we also have a, pa a patient population who um, is not going for curative care. They're in the palliative setting. And so in that patient population, we can also help them with symptom management, cannabis counseling, dietary um, things that can help their quality of life. That's wonderful. What are some specifics of what um, you're offering here at Mayo Clinic? So our... Uh, my colleagues in medical oncology and really anyone who's taking care of cancer patients, they're referring to our clinic. And one of the things we are starting uh, this month is a chemotherapy wellness class. And that's going to be a class run by my nurse, Maggie Hoffman. And so we are hoping we get all new patients to run through this class where we can teach them about healthy diet and lifestyle issues. And then also teach them about all the integrative modalities, such as acupuncture, massage, stress reduction, improving sleep, and get them to the resources that they need while they're undergoing their uh, initial therapy. And then we also see people um, it, for survivorship type of issues, lingering symptoms, di uh, lifestyle modification. Um, so really helping our patients through the whole continuum of their care. Stacey, I think this is just wonderful. I've been very open in discussing my own diagnosis with breast cancer last year and treatment. And I think that you spend so much time focused on the diagnosis and what's the next step in the treatment in there. But there's so much peripheral, there's so much else that affects you as a human being. And so to hear you um, uh, uh, kind of encompassing all of that in your care, I think is fantastic. And the, and the great thing about this type of practice also that it really uh, empowers the patient and patients become very active in their care and because they're the ones doing the work, they're working on their diet, they're doing the exercise, we're just guiding them, but they're, you know, these are things that they can do and they can control to improve their health and outcomes. Stacey, how widely do you see integrative medicine being accepted in the United States and uh, internationally as well? I think it's becoming definitely more accepted um, in the last few years, and there's a huge patient demand for this. Um, there are integrative medicine practices now at most major academic centers and even in the community um, which is different, I think, than it has been in the past. In the past, it's really been, you know, kind of standalone private practice type of uh, type of things that were cash uh, pay. And but the integrative oncology piece is definitely new, and there aren't very many of us who are actually trained in oncology and then also in integrative medicine. So that's definitely a, a, a more rare entity. There are a few institutions um, across the country that have that, but but. It's, it's not common. <laughs> what should patients ask their uh, physicians about integrative oncology? So I think if there is someone that is at their institution that can help them in that er arena, it can definitely be a great adjunct. So, but also it doesn't necessarily need to be an oncologist. I mean, I think that many integrative providers have worked for you know, years and years with cancer patients and have a lot of experience. So even just being referred to an integrative program can help them also with symptoms and issues that come up for cancer patients. Is there research that's ongoing in this field, such as at Mayo Clinic? There is. Uh, more and more, actually, research is being published, which is great because integrative medicine in the past, you know, it's been sort of case studies or small type of studies because it is hard you know, to get funding for some of these things. Um, so, but we are seeing more and more publications coming out about natural supplements and other, you know, type of integrative modalities such as acupuncture and yoga and the benefits of mindfulness. At Mayo, we uh, have a study that we will be opening shortly using a topical cannabis cream for chemotherapy-induced neuropathy. Oh, so yeah, that should be great. Um, 
I think that will patients will be real interested in in that um, lots of interest in that field. So and then also we are working on other trials using other natural supplements for symptom management. So the trials are coming. That's very exciting. Love to hear that. Uh, any last thoughts for our listeners, Stacy? Well, I think that integrated medicine, you know, can't, it, it, it's not only just for cancer patients, it's really the fundamentals are for everyone. And, it, you know, working on improving our lifestyle, getting away from processed foods and, and, you know, excess sugar and getting up and moving our bodies, exercising daily, getting good quality sleep and stress reduction. I mean, these are things that not only help with cancer patients, but really with everyone. So I think everyone could probably benefit from integrative medicine. That's wonderful. Thank you for being here today, Stacy. Thank you for having me. Our thanks to Dr. Stacy DeAndre, clinical and integrative oncologist here at Mayo Clinic for being with us today. I hope that you learned something. I know that I did, and we wish each of you a wonderful day. Mayo Clinic Q&A is a production of the Mayo Clinic News Network and is available wherever you get and subscribe to your favorite podcasts. To see a list of all Mayo Clinic podcasts, visit newsnetwork.mayoclinic.org. Then click on podcasts. Thanks for listening and be well. We hope you'll offer a review of this and other episodes when the option is available. Comments and questions can also be sent to Mayo Clinic News Network at mayo.edu.